it was funny over a year ago I was one of those people that was like mm, I don't really know about cats I take a fish a bird even a dog maybe but look at me now look at me now if it wasn't so What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. As you can see, I got a special guest with me. My cat, Kiwi, right? But I really want to talk about the whole cat adoption process. The good, the bad, and the unexpected. To make a long story short, a few months ago, I had to, you know, help watch my aunt's cat. And shout out to my aunt, Nicole. I know she might be watching this. I had to help watch my aunt's cat. And it was like about a good two months. And then after, you know, my aunt left with her cat, I was kind of like, wow, cats really do add an ambiance and a certain energy to the household. And when she left with her cat, Coco, I was like, you know what? I think I want a cat. And before this, I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. With, about cats, I had this idea, like they scratch. They have a certain smell. I'm like, eh. Down like that, okay? <laughs> Look at me now. But here's the thing. When it comes to adopting a cat, you have to really be sure that this is what you want. Because it's not just, oh, it's a cute little cat. I'm going to take it home and just feed it. And No. Watching a cat, adopting a cat, being a cat parent, it's called being a cat parent for a reason. You really have to give this your all. Like, you're taking care of a cat it's not a fish it's not a bird you know those are animals too they need proper care but a cat is a whole nother thing you think you know you have no idea in the process of how i did it is i looked up local shelters in my neighborhood there was one you know a little a little not they'll far away but it was a little <laughs> destination to get there right but then when I went there, I called them, you look on the website, you choose the cat you want. But then when you go there, it'd be a whole nother thing and I ended up choosing another cat. The first cat I chose was gonna be a golden type looking cat. But then when I got there, there was like, oh, she's with her sister. You have to buy both of them together. And I was like, Not But then I also had, you know, a second option, which was Kiwi. And I remember, I said, you know what? Let me see Kiwi. So I remember she took me downstairs. And, oh, before I even get into that, the smell in the animal shelter, I mean, think of a zoo times 22. I mean, bang! Oh, my God. Smell in there. I don't know. Maybe they're used to it. But to come, come out of work smelling like that every day, wow. So I commend all the people that work at the shelter. All the people that take care of the animals at the shelter because that's not easy but anyway like i was saying i went downstairs she showed me kiwi and i saw a few other cats but they were just sitting there some of them were meowing at me and some of them were just like yeah whatever i went downstairs and saw kiwi as soon as i bent down to her cage her gate she came up to me like she wanted me to pet her she was like, oh you want to take her out she took her out she was playing with me running around and i was like i like her energy this is the reason why I wanted a cat, the energy they bring to a household. So I said, I want her. My mother was with me and she was like, you know what? I like Kiwi. So then I had that second opinion. And you know, my mother is another one. We was both really sketchy on cats, but she was like, you know, I like her. So we chose Kiwi. Then, you know, it's the whole process. You know, you gotta do the paperwork. You gotta pay a little fee. I paid about $80. And then you gotta make sure, okay, she got all her shots. She has to get spayed, her spay surgery. So, you know, she won't have no more kids. And that's another thing. When I had, they had Kiwi, she was there. The owner surrendered her with like a two week old kitten. They named Strawberry. So it was Kiwi Strawberry, you get it? Strawberry Kiwi. And I was like, wow. But one of the things you have to do when you bring your cat home, you have to make sure that your house, your apartment, wherever you live, you have to make sure it's cat proofed. You know, make sure your windows are closed. Make sure there's no cleaning products around. Make sure your floor is clean. Make sure you watch out for all the electrical wires because cats, I told y'all in another video, they do what they want. And when they get bored, which I'm gonna get into, 
They find anything, anything that looks like a string, plastic, anything on the floor, they're going to play with it. Some of them might try to eat it. You got to be careful. Make sure your house, your entire house is cat proofed, you know, just for the safety of your cat. And, you know, you should keep a clean household anyway, but especially when you have a cat, you got to really make sure that everything is in order to where in the middle of the night, they won't be mischievous and start playing with anything and try to eat it. And make sure your house is cat proof. And that's another thing. When I brought her home, they always say this. Make sure the essentials you really need, you need a cat bag. This is the cat carrier bag I got. I got this from Amazon. It was only like 20 something dollars. Not that bad. You see, make sure it's like a nice see-through net. Got a nice soft padding on the bottom. I don't know if you can see it. You could put her in, in the middle or zip the sides. I found it easier to just unzip this, pick her up and put her in the middle because she likes running in and out. So make sure you got a cat carrier bag. Something else you will really need is, of course, a litter box. Before you bring a cat home, make sure you, and that's another thing, you gotta really be careful with the litter because I'm gonna tell you, if you don't get the right litter, you're gonna have some litter box problems and it's not gonna be good. Uh -uh. Now wait a minute, hold up! She knows what I'm talking about because that's another thing. When you go to the shelters, most shelters, right? They have paperwork of the cats and the history and, you know, different behavior problems. One of the things it said about her, where I was like, oh, is she had a few litter box issues where if she gets agitated, she uses the litter box outside the litter box, if you know what I mean. Like, and I was like, I don't know about that. And the first night, it was cool. But I, I got to be transparent here because it is what it is. The second morning I had her, the first night was cool. And that's another thing. When you first get the cats, they hide from you. I took out the bag. She hid under my bathtub for about four hours. And then in the middle of the night, she came out exploring the house and everything. That's what they do because it's a new environment. They've been in the shelter for who knows how long, right? And in the shelter, a lot of the cats were sick, sneezing, and, you know, they give each other illnesses. So you got to really be careful with the cat you select, too. Like, really make sure this is the cat you want. So anyways, the second morning, I got her. Everything was going cool. Out of nowhere, she jumped on my bed. This was her first time doing so. And I'm thinking, okay, she's just going to lay on my bed. She just get in the field for everything. I saw her spinning around in circles. And I was like, and don't you know, I saw her, like, squat down, and she pissed on my bed. Now, you done pissed me off. And this was when I was like, I had to really sit there, take a deep breath. I'm basically meditate and be like, mind you, this is the second night. She knows what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. This is the second night. No, second morning. I had her, and she peed in my bed, and I was like, and I looked it up, and it says, you know, when it's a new environment, some of them do that, some of them do it for you know, marking their territory, all this different type of stuff. And I was like, oh no. For a split second, I thought about returning her back to the shelter because I was like, I'm not dealing with this. No. <laughs> but then I said, okay. I was like, take a deep breath, right? And I, you know, wash my sheets, wash everything, everything was cool. But you really have to introduce your cat to the litter box and make sure you have the right litter. And I know we get those litters that have like them strong smells. And I found that the clumping litter, the sandy type clumping litter works best for me. I'm going to, I only had her, that's another thing. I had her for three weeks now. I'm going to experiment with the litters to see like what's that perfect one. Just like how you do with the cat food. Like I realized you, I, I use, let me see if I can get a good thing with this. Friskies. Frisky's cat food. Her favorite one so far, I've been experimenting with the flavors, is ocean, white fish, and tuna and sauce. The Streds. And they got many flavors. You go to your local supermarket or store, they got many flavors. That's her favorite one. But I still give her a variety because you want to keep feeding her the same thing every day. Like, think about it like, as us, you know, humans, would you want to eat the same thing every day? So, you know, you got to switch it up. When I first got her, they said she had a mild case of gingivitis. And that's common in cats because 
you know, cats don't brush their teeth every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they eat all types of stuff, you know, meats and this and that. So you got to really be on that too where, and luckily the shelter I went to, they had a connection with some of the vets in the area and I got a free vet visit and a free voucher. And when I left, they gave me like this goodie bag of all kind of treats and like little tips and things like that. And one of the things they gave me was, I'm oh, sorry, I'm blocking her. One of the things they gave me was some cat toothpaste and a toothbrush specifically for cats. And you gotta really be wary to like, some t you know, a cat is not just gonna let you just brush your teeth. You gotta slowly introduce them. Introduce them to the toothpaste first. Let them get a taste for it. Then, you know, you let them eat it, whatever. Let them move it around their mouth. Try to slowly introduce the brush to brush their teeth. It's not gonna be easy. And you know, look, you see, she likes to play. You see how she is? She likes to play around. So she's not just gonna let me just sit there and brush her teeth. But it's a slow process. You gotta slowly introduce them to the toothbrush. Some things I still need to get is a cat tree. You know those big, tall, like cat condos with the scratching posts where they could jump into different, like little, basically little cat houses and like hide into them and climb up top of them. That's another thing you need because I've been looking up a lot of videos researching cats when they walk into a room, they look from the ground up. Anything where they could jump on. That's what they're gonna do. So if you don't want them jumping on your couch, on your furniture, on your tables, sometimes you should be behind my TV. You gotta get them your cat tree, a cat post, scratching posts. Like for example, I got this one. This type of scratcher board. Some of these things you can get off Amazon real easy. And let me see if she wanna use it now. Kiwi, you wanna use this? Look, look. There we go. You see what I'm saying? Because she was scratching up my carpet and everything before. You get your cat one of these, you're not gonna have to worry about them scratching up your couch, your furniture, your carpets, your rugs, none of that. Sometimes, the first few days, she was just walking by it, walking over, ignoring it. Sometimes you gotta pick them up and put them on it and they naturally know, oh, let me scratch this. You know, they like to sharpen and file their nails. So, she likes to bite it. She knows better. Kiwi, really? You really showing out today. You really showing out. Why are you doing that? Another thing you need is some cat treats. Like you see, I got these right here. Look, look, look. you see how she gets? These, I got the Temptations. She liked the chicken filet the best. And then now look, she wants some. Because, see, get them some cat treats. Don't overfeed them because these become addictive to them. And look, you see, now she looking like, these become really addictive to them. And if you feed them too much, that can cause some health problems and cause them to get overweight. So look, let me, okay, Kiwi. I know you, thank you for participating in my video. Let me give you some treats. Now she wants to eat some of them. Okay, now she got her treats. She should be calm for all few seconds she eat them in like 20 seconds going back to the litter box you really have to be sure you got the right litter you got the right box I would recommend a litter box without the hood on it because it's just easier for them to get in and get out it don't trap the smells I use a scented litter I know they say you're not supposed to do that but sometimes the smells it reminds me of the shelter like that strong zoo type smell and you know they use the bathroom they in the litter box so those smells build up over time so you want to have some type of freshness to it and she gets in and out of it with no problem but like i said i still want to experiment with the litters the clumping litters because it's easier to pick up just to make sure that i get that perfect one if not i'll just use the one i'm using now and one of the most important things when it comes to having a cat is keeping them entertained and that's another thing i'm gonna show y'all a few videos in the middle of the night i think they're called obligate carnivores. Cats are really active at night, in the middle of the night. I'm talking two, three, four in the morning. Kiwi, Kiwi, look. Wow, look at how their eyes just glow in the dark. Kiwi. See, she always playing with something. That's when they're really active and energetic. 
So throughout the day, you got to keep your cat entertained or you see this? They get restless. Oh, look. Thank you, Kiwi, for joining the video in front of the camera. They get restless or they get bored. They just start doing anything, messing with anything, any wires, any type of plastic. Like I said, make sure your house is clean, right? Now, look, now she want to play. Make sure everything in your house is cat-proofed and clean because if you don't keep your cat entertained, they're going to entertain themselves. And I know sometimes it can be annoying. I want to sleep. She jumps in my bed and she makes a lot of noise. She has the zoomies. It's, that's when they start running fast all around the house. And she just wants to stitch it. She wants to play. And sometimes you be tired. You're just coming off of work. It'd be in the middle of the night. You want to get some sleep. And your cat is meowing. She's a meower. She's not doing it now, but she loves to meow, meow, meow. Jump up and play. And I'm like, Kiwi, I want to sleep. Oh, my God. So look, that's another thing. You gotta really keep your cat entertained. Buy them toys. Buy them, you know, even with the vet. They gave me like a little laser, which she loves playing with. Like little chase the laser, laser tag. And the best thing to get for them is like the little wand toys, the feather toys. I'm about to show you right now how she gets with that. That really keeps them active. So they're not just eating and sleeping all day. She runs around, she stays active. And like they, my cat, she's a petite cat. She was only like six pounds when I got her. Now she's about a little over seven. You gotta really keep your cats active so they don't get overweight and they don't get diabetes. Because when I went to the shelter, some of the cats, they had little signs, this cat has diabetes, this cat has this, this cat has asthma. I'm like, wow, like cats can catch these diseases that's common in humans too if they're not given the proper care. So you gotta really make sure you give your cat that proper care, that proper exercise, a proper diet. I told y'all earlier, you remember I said she loves her wand toys? Let me show you how much she loves them. Come on, let's play. See? Because to them, this looks like a bird with feathers. So they love going back and forth trying to catch it. You see what I'm saying? This is her favorite thing to do. Whoa, see? But then sometimes you wave it back and forth, let them catch it so they feel accomplished. Keep catching, catch it. And then after a few seconds, see, she tries to run off with it. But it's like, no, I'll give you. After a few seconds, just do it again. Catch it. There we go. Look, look. You see, now she wants to run off with it. Cats are such fascinating creatures, interesting creatures, interesting animals, and they really add a certain energy and a certain ambiance to your household. The thing is, you gotta really be willing to give them the proper care. Make sure your house is cat proof, give them a proper diet. Make sure you have the energy and time to play with them, to keep them entertained, or they can become depressed, they become bored, and they just start doing anything in your house. That's when they wreak havoc, you know? You gotta really make sure that you want a cat, that you're willing and able to take care of a cat before you adopt one. Here she comes. Kiwi, what you doing? You ready You finish playing with it? Look, look, look. See? It's up here. See, she loves playing with this. Look at this. Come on, Kiwi. See, this is up everything. Look, now she want to run off with it. Y'all see this? <laughs> and last but not least, I briefly mentioned this, but one of the most important things you could do is give your cats proper vet visits. You know once twice a year luckily i got that free voucher but you know it might be a little costly to some you gotta really make sure your cat is okay i took her to the vet they said everything was fine they said she's a little petite they wanted her to gain a little bit more weight <laughs> trust me she is and you gotta really give them that proper care 
And if you notice any weird changes in your cat's behavior, that's like really alarming, take them to the vet. It might be costly, but it's better to be safe than sorry where your cat is acting different and then all of a sudden, you know, you be like, damn, if I would've took her to the vet weeks ago, this could've got fixed. So take your cats to the vet at least twice a year. Make sure they got all their shots, the dewormers, all that type of stuff. You know, the rabies shots, all of that. And make sure you take your cat to the vet. And with that being said, I just want to thank y'all for watching and listening and tuning in to see me and Kiwi. Having her for these last three weeks has been quite an experience, but I wouldn't change it. You know, there are times when you get annoyed and you get a little frustrated, but that's a part of being a cat parent, you know? And I wanna ask y'all, like, what are y'all tips for taking care of animals, taking care of cats specifically? Do y'all have cats? Do y'all have experience with cats? What is y'all take on adopting a cat? Were you thinking about adopting a cat? Like, really let me know, what are y'all fun stories y'all have with cats? Cause you know, cats are crazy. They do what they want, they be all over the place, but they're loyal. They have that thing to them where they could be solitary, but they could be under you. They could be, you know, cats are truly special. And like I said, before you adopt one and you take on that responsibility of taking care of one, you got to really make sure this is what you want. Please guys, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see y'all in the next video.